Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right! Episode 226 of Shirt Show. We're talking with Tim from Howler's Design in Ohio. Let's go! Well, uh, hey everybody, it is just me today. Andy is out, uh, had some last minute stuff come up, so it is just going to be me and the guest and, uh, hopefully it doesn't suck. So, uh, I am gonna try my best. We'll see. Well, he will be missed. Uh, today I'm going to go through some of our, uh, sponsors of the show. So, uh, you guys, I grabbed uh, one of our stickers it's not as cool as Andy's, but it's it's an actual replica. So here we go. Frank. It all starts with a screen, and whether it's new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. To find out more, go to graphic screen fashion, ffffrank.com or greatfuckingscreens.com. Cleaning screens is no fun, but EasyWay makes it way more funner. Their line of eco-friendly chemicals will make reclaiming screens a whole lot easier. Check them out at EasyWay.com. EasyWay, it's the easiest way. GraphX is the source for production-ready digital art and remote art staffing. We use them every single day. They can help with any size shop, from just starting out to enterprise level. Size doesn't matter. Okay. Learn more at GraphicSource.com. Choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated, and that's why we love Chromaline. Go to Chromaline.com to watch Kev's vids or contact him on IG at The Emulsion Guru and get the answers you want and need. There's actually a new video on Chromaline that is my shop going over the laser. Um, SNS has been our go-to apparel source since day one with over 85 brands to choose from, including Adidas, Columbia, Independent, Gildan, and more. Check them out at ssactivewear.com. By far the best. Uh, I can't say much more than that. The weathered hues of comfort colors are inspired by nature, so it makes sense that their dye process would be made with respect for it too. The pigment pure process produces earth-friendly colors by using a third less water and taking 40% less process time consuming less energy and requiring zero salt holy shit i made it through that uh go check out comfort colors my, by far my best shirt that we sell uh, my favorite shirt personally um it's just fucking rules uh we can't forget our buddy matthew michael marcott at screen print gpt uh it's a great site free tools can ask it all kinds of screen printing questions. It's totally free. You should at least check it out if you haven't already. I think he just hit like a thousand subscribers or something. Um, and it, it rules. Uh, Matt also has DTFstream.com, which we just started using at the shop, which has been really great. So if you're, you need to get uh, some DTF, it kind of picks printers which are local to you or close to you so that you can get like the best shipping times. So that's kind of been pretty sweet. Um, that's it for our sponsors, our buddies. Um, I did want to ask you guys, especially cause it's just me today. If you can give us a like, follow, share this on Instagram, on your stories, what you're doing, listening to, um, that would rule. I'd appreciate it. Leave us some comments on YouTube. Uh, me and Andy both get in there and comment back. So we would, uh, love to hear from you guys, guys. Today we are talking with Tim Kelly from Howler's Design. What's up, buddy? What's up? How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. I feel a little barren here. Andy's not in the room, so I have, I have nobody to to yell at and banter back and forth with. <laughs> what have you been doing for the last hour? <laughs> Talking to yourself? I've been sitting here just like staring at the screen and I was like, oh shit, I should probably do sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, uh, no, I'm stoked to be able to talk to you. We've DM back and forth about stuff for a long time, so it's nice to... yeah sit here and talk to your actual face for sure how's things how's things going there they're good man they're super busy right now as really usual. yeah yeah it's yeah. been uh it's been up and down but it's busy right now yeah it's so funny like the the amount of people i talk to it's um i don't know if it's just the instinct of like when we're a business owner and somebody comes up to us and says how's things how's things you're always just like, oh good yeah busy busy whatever because you don't want to burden them with the real news um but 
it's been so weird. Like I will either be really slow and then I'll talk to somebody and they're like, Oh, we're fucking at capacity. Like we couldn't possibly take on any more work. And I'm like, how, how is this happening? And then like every shop I actually talked to when out we're by ourselves, they're like, yeah, dude, this year has been so weird and like, so uneven. And then like our numbers aren't like necessarily terrible. They're just like, kind of like whatever, like no season yeah. or whatever. We got a couple of giant orders in the spring that like were real unexpected mm -hmm. and like July, like 4th of July leading up to that. It was like, we were barely getting like 40 hours there for a couple of weeks. And I was like, it's got to pick up, got to pick up. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then it did, you know? Mm -hmm. So now we're just back to, back to full capacity. So, yeah, I, I think the thing though, too, is it's like, um, it's really kind of a blessing to a degree because it really got us to dial in like what's important here like systems and processes and stuff that kind of maybe were great but needed some help and like employees that did we actually need them and want to have them here and like what's really important to us as far as profitability and stuff so it was really kind of cool honestly to like dial all that stuff in this year so like if things like go i say back to normal after like the election and all that stuff like we'll be a lot better suited than we were before i feel like has that nice. been the case for you guys at all like did you do any tweaking this year uh we moved moved in a new building so that was a pretty big tweak <laughs> it's and a giant uh, tweak yeah yeah. And, you know, we moved and then we had like four or five semis come that week. So we went from like just barely getting in to like five or six skids of shirts That's all awesome. at once. There's like 15,000 shirts. And then that was in the spring. And then we just kind of balls to the wall since then. And we we're still trying to like get moved in. There's still drop ceiling that's missing. Like the fire inspector has been here like three times. I'm like, it's not done. It's like, all right, well, I'll come back when it comes up on my system again. I'm like, all right, well. And they're not stopping you at any capacity. They're just like, because it's no. only drop ceiling. Like, it's not really a super big deal or anything. Yeah, we moved a wall. So, mm. and it was, we're like, I don't know what it was. It's like about a thousand square foot of warehouse. And then the other 15 was like office. And then we got rid of a wall, moved another wall. So like, it's, yeah, he said it's just for fire. So he, he doesn't. It's only, it's only fire. Just, <laughs> I think he's no just checking deal. his boxes and being like, Hey, that place burned down, but I was there. I told him, you know, yeah. <laughs> he's just, yeah. He, so. He's got it off of his conscious that he did what he needed. To yeah. Do. Yeah. So, so we were, we were just talking about not to jinx anybody, but I do know some shops that basically have burnt down or had fire issues. And it's like the scariest thing for me, especially because like I own this building and like all the like hard, uh, like work and blood, sweat and tears we put into this place to like, to th even think about it burning down would be so shitty. Yeah. And that's when like, I go to employees and I'm like, Hey, maybe not leave the extension cords plugged in. <laughs> or like, you know what I mean? Like make sure the breakers are off. It's, it's because yeah. of that. That's terrifying to me. Yeah. I mean, like we spent an arm and a leg with the electricity when we moved in with uh, our electrician and then there was uh, like the whole wall had outlets and then none of them worked. So we were like running off extension cords there for a couple months. And I was like, dude, you got to come back here. And he was so busy. Finally, he made it back and put it. So we don't have any more extension cords lying around. Yeah. For the most this is part, like this know. is like boring content to listen to but like for those of you who are have your own building or whatever it was so much better peace of mind for me to like got everything down to the studs and then rebuild all the walls and then put all the electric in conduit on the walls instead of in the walls so now like every piece of this building i know exactly where the wires are i know like mice aren't chewing anything i know it's like safe and sound and like at first you're like this is kind of i don't know not necessarily ugly but more industrial looking but you never see it now like i don't ever think about it it's not like i'm like oh there's conduit for the light switch and there's conduit for all the other things it's like now i just know where everything is and i don't have to worry about where wires are buried 
Yeah. So. You know, the, those electricians, man, they can run that conduit like a work of art, you know? And oh, got, yeah. Like, a dude, bunch of sure. it all running yeah. next to each other. It looks real cool. Yeah, so, it's awesome. They're all, I mean, they're it's all like, way up in the ceiling, too, so I never, yeah. I never really yeah. see it. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Well, Christina kind of gave me um, a breakdown of what you guys had talked about, and there's a lot more than I had thought um, of, and I, I didn't quite realize that you were a designer first. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell me that story? Yeah, I mean, I think in, you know, high school and then throughout college, I think I took every art class that was available. So well, it was mostly high school, you know, it was like, pottery, sculpture, painting, drawing, like, you know, I did everything. Right. So then my, uh, my lovely mother was like, you should do something that's art, art focused. So that's how I got into the graphic design thing. Cause she knew some people that were graphic designers. She's like, yeah, they make good money. So you should do that. And that's what I <laughs> do you did. Think, do you think graphic <laughs> do you think graphic designers would argue with you on that fact now? Yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. percent. Well, I mean, like I know what I was making as a designer, so right, right. It's not. Um, I mean, I think she just, you know, um, I was. She saw that someone college. was paying like a hundred million dollars for a Pepsi logo or something. She wasn't thinking Probably. that you're making two hundred dollars on a design you spent two weeks on. I think what she thought was no one. I've got like nine or ten, nine or eleven cousins on her side. None of them went to college. I think I was the first one to go to college. So she was like, you're, you're doing this. <laughs> it's kind of, so that's kind of how that all happened. But um, yeah. And then throughout college, you know, I took every design course that I could. Uh, I got a tour of Jack Prince in one of our classes. So it was kind of like Dude, my first, really? like, I mean, Cleveland state is right next to Jack Prince. So awesome. they took us over there and it's they... funny because their designers are like, Back then, at least, they were like in like a broom closet. It was kind of funny. I walked really? in there and I was like, "These are the designers." <laughs> they were my uh, my like Jordan when I was was younger. They were like the shop that I had like the magazine, and I would see because I always used to get. I was the artsy kid in high school too. Like I like drawing and designing and all that stuff. And I was I would always get juxtaposed mag- magazine, and Jack Prince always had like a big ad in there, and I would always see it, and then I would look them up and you know, see their shop and everything. And I was like, dude, I want that. I want that someday. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, for you to be cool. like, be able to tour that and to be doing design and stuff is pretty sweet. Yeah. And that was like my first, like, I mean, it was all, it's all kind of a blur. I just remember like, we went like to the upstairs, this is in an old building and uh, where they had their screen printing it was like two or three floors up, but it was just press after press after press. And I was like, this is wild. There's mm-hmm. people everywhere, but I didn't really know what was going on at the time, like print wise. Like, you know, if I went there now, I'd be like, oh, this all makes sense. But right, right. I had no idea what I was looking at at the time. So it blows your mind a little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Do you feel like college was worth it for you with design? Uh, I think that there's some principles that they taught us that were good that I'm sure you could figure out on your own. Mm hmm. I think the biggest thing with college, what it taught me was like a work ethic. I remember always like I, I always had my laptop with me everywhere I went for the whole time I was in college. And then we'd get done for the summer and like, I'd come home from like working and I'd sit down, I'd open up the computer and be like, what am I going to do now? It's like, it was just like in my head that like, there's something on this computer that I have to do. Right. But it wasn't the case. It was just, it got me in like the, the habit of just wanting to work and always having something to do yeah i was having a discussion with somebody the other day about uh i think it was christina actually i was having this discussion with where it was like in my personal experience and my friends personal experiences it was like going to college was something our generation was just like kind of pushed into like you're a piece of shit if you don't go to school and then I, almost none of us now are using anything to do with what we went to school with for like our careers. Yeah, and, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's, I mean, not to, I'm not trying to shy people away from school. I just feel like it's one of those things of like, you need to know what you for sure want to do if you're going to go do that whole thing, or you just want the college experience, I guess, but that's an expensive uh, experience. Yeah. I mean, I lived at home the whole time I was in college or most of it. I mean, I live in Cleveland, went to Cleveland state. So, Mm -hmm. 
I just I, went I, for I, graphic design, but I had already started the company that kind of turned into this at the time. Like it was super like in a basement and whatever. Um, but I went for graphic design. So I was like, cool. I want to learn how to like make all these like, you know, shirt graphics and whatever. And I walked into like the first or second day of class and the professor, I say professor, it was just some fucking weird design dude. But he was just like, what are you guys super, what are you guys super into so that I can just focus all of like our creative efforts in that direction. And like everyone in the class, but me was like, I want to make anime. And I was like, <laughs> I want to not do this class anymore. Like I'm done. <laughs> and I think like I gave it a couple more weeks and I was like, I'm done with this. I took all my financial aid money and bought band equipment. And then I just like dropped out of school. Nice. And, and then I just kept going with the business and I was like, I I'm done with this. So nice. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely like a, a lot of that college stuff is, it seemed like a waste, but I guess I got a couple of, uh, little things out of it that are, that are mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. You know, the work ethic, there are definitely some design principles, but I don't think you really need a degree to be a graphic designer. Right. You just need to, you do. know, I think, but then, uh, you know, this was like 10, 12 years ago. I don't know when I graduated, but that like the whole resume thing was like a thing, you know? Oh, so like, sure. if you didn't have like a resume and like, where did you go to school? Like it, it was kind of hard to get that first, the first couple jobs, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like the portfolio when you graduate, like there's nothing there, but, um, fictitious projects like right you know, did in school like oh this i mean this is what, for nike or whatever yep exactly yeah some girl just actually came in and she was like i'm a graphic designer i just graduated and i'm looking for a job i was like all right you can leave your resume and i looked at her portfolio and that was exactly it it was like <laughs> pepsi logo and stuff and i was like yeah this is definitely a college portfolio <laughs> which is funny too because like i see that a lot on like uh like instagram and tiktok and stuff where it's uh these college kids are like oh i'm gonna i'm a they're great designers but they're like let's redesign the like kansas city chiefs logo or let's like redesign this logo or whatever and they go through the whole process and they're like this is what it looks like some of them are complete dog shit and some of them are like wow this is actually really good and then there's that's like girl. how you keep going there's a girl that did every nfl logo I think that's sweet. the one I'm talking about. Yeah. She, yeah. she blew up on one of them. I think it was like the team actually like offered to buy it and stuff. Like it was really, like really good. And I was yeah. Like, I remember oh. seeing that. Yeah. It was cool. Mm -hmm. So you went from that to what, like you, she mentioned you got some jobs at some actually pretty cool design pl or places to design it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't even know what my first job was. Oh, I think it might've been uh, for Joanne fabrics. That was like their web development team. So we sat in a dark room every day and didn't talk to each other. That was miserable. no offense, but what kind of website <laughs> does Joanne Fabrics have? Uh, well, it's an e-commerce website, so it was it was constant every day. There was like a pile of stuff on my desk that I had to do, but it was mostly like production. Like you need to make this sales ad that's going to go in the front slider. Mm -hmm. I did that. Um, I worked at American Greetings. Uh, that's like every designer's dream, I think. Or, it, you know, it's just cards, right? Greeting cards, yeah. I had yeah, a buddy that, that uh, Zach Newton that worked at Hallmark, and that's all he did is he just designed cards all day long. Yeah, it was pretty monotonous. <laughs> um, I worked at uh, Allegro Coffee, which is Whole Foods house brand of coffee. That was pretty cool. We did a bunch of like package design and did some design work for them. Um, and then like when I started to get into the apparel stuff, I worked for like a custom hat company. And then a golf apparel brand, but it was all like photography and design and stuff. So still wasn't like in the production of it. The cool part of that, though, is you had to have learned a bunch of like ways to do things that are applied to what you do now. Right. Like it's not like you just were like, oh, I like making stuff and then started making stuff like you learned like how to make like good tech packs and like, you yeah. know, all your mock ups probably rule. You know what I mean? Like you've done <laughs> enough of those. I don't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I still do all the art here. So it's, uh, I mean, like the, we're not doing anything like crazy art wise here. So it's most of it I can handle, you know, taught myself the separations many years ago. The way I got into printing was printing like posters of like my art. And that's 
it was all flat stock stuff. And I learned how to do the separations on these crazy posters on uh, Skillshare. And it was Dakanji. The they do a bunch of concert posters. You heard of them? Mm -hmm. And they did a, it was like a paid, paid class that I took. And like they walked you through the whole thing. So it was pretty cool. That's how I learned how to do all the separations. And then what got you into screen printing for like apparel? Everyone was like, you should print t-shirts, <laughs> not just posters. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, like it was just kind of like a side thing. Like I, I think I told Christina, like I designed the poster and it would take forever because I just didn't want to design it. And then like right. the printing was the fun part. Right. Right. So it's like, I just need to do more printing. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about business. I was having a hard time getting anyone to buy a poster. That was like before Instagram and stuff. So, you know, it might have been easier now if I tried, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I started the t-shirt thing. And how, started did, it, how did that go? Like, right, like when you first started, was it like you, you hit the ground running or was it just like a slow trickle from going design into printing? I built a press out of wood. You ever see that um, the tutorial? That's how I built mm -hmm. the first four color press, which didn't last very long, but I, you know, I printed with it. Um, and then I got the Riley Hopkins kit, whatever that was four by one with water-based ink. And, um, and I was living in Denver at the time. So I was doing it all in our apartment. And then there was a place called rockstar screen printing. Shout out Randy at rockstar. He definitely helped me out. I don't think they're around anymore. I think they got bought, but yeah, he definitely, definitely helped me out more than he had to getting going. So. And then we moved back to Cleveland from Denver and had a press in my parents' basement for a while when we first moved back. And then it was in a rental house in the garage, no electricity, no water out there, leaking roof. Then we kind of got kicked out of that house when we told him we were buying a house. He was like, you guys got to go now. So then I found a spot, which was our first location, thousand square foot warehouse, for like 600 bucks. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, we were there for a while. Was it good or was it sketchy? The warehouse? Yeah. Oh, it was legit. I mean, like, we're, like, out in, like, the suburbs. So it is mm -hmm. definitely way underpriced. And I was going to say 600 bucks. I was wondering if there was, like, like a crack house out back or something. No, I know. It's, it's, like, the city it's in is actually, like, pretty nice. It's just old lady. She just never wanted to raise the rent. Like, it was her... Uh, husband who had passed away he owned the building and she just kept it real cheap it ended up getting raised to like 700 <laughs> but yeah yeah it was it was legit and then you know we definitely outgrew it we had like a pack rat out front where we'd keep all the boxes because we didn't have any more room inside mm -hmm. and i was looking for something to stay in the city that we're in but i wanted air conditioning so we just we waited and waited and now we're in a building with ac and it's fantastic <laughs> sorry guys that don't have ac you don't know yeah i don't i don't have ac yeah this year was the only year where i really cared that much i feel like it just got like record hot like too long yeah. and it was kind of burning us out but here we're whining and then there's all these print shops in like arizona and texas and stuff that are, deal with it all year every year so. well you know i mean we're not like turning it down to 60 you know it's like 72 yeah. 74 it's just enough to but take it's better than off. 110 in the shop trying to print t-shirts yeah and you know what like the guy that works here with me chris he's like it's like if you don't have ac it's like three four o'clock and you're just like that's when you start making mistakes and going slow because it's right. so hot and that's you know it, it's it's nice so so did you have did you have a bunch of challenges going into it or were you just like, I'm going to print, I'm going to get, did you get clients from design to work with you for print and it kind of took off that way? Or did you have to just start over, like start fresh of like, I'm just going to market the shit out of this. No, I kind of just started fresh, you know, cause I just moved back to Cleveland and we were gone for like three, four years. So I, you know, I didn't really know too many people that needed shirts. Um, start an Instagram page and just followed a whole bunch of local people. And I just wake up in the morning and just go down the line and just like every single post until some guy, um, finally filled out the quote for him and was like, yeah, I guess I need some shirts. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And then he led me to a whole bunch of people and you know, it all just kind of snowballed from there. 
Uh, everything's kind of been word of mouth. We don't really do too much marketing. And is it a lot of just, um, because this kind of ties into one of the things I thought was interesting that uh, Christina talked about was, and we can get into this in a little bit, was she was talking about the, like collections and stuff and that you kind of had to deal with that. And I think that's a, that's a big pain point for a lot of shops is there's some people I talk to and they're like, yeah, I got an invoice out. Like, you know, I'm, I'm owed like 200 grand or I'm owed like whatever. And I'm like, how, like how to, how, like, I mean, I know how, but it's like, I don't operate that way. I'm a very, like, we take payment up front, we print the job, whatever, but that's my market. You know, like I'm not doing a lot of people that are like net 30, net 40, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, uh, an artist or a band or whatever comes to me and they're like, I want to order this. And I'm like, here's the invoice. They pay it. We print, we ship. So, yeah. Um, so what happened with that was, uh, I've been working with the guy for like five or six years at least. And he always had like, you know, they were always nice orders. They were like a few, few thousand bucks. And he always just paid with a card, which was, which was fine. And then it came time to do this big order. And because I had known him for so long and he was like, I mean, like we would tax all the time. Like he was seemed like a stand up guy. I was like, all right, we're going to do this order, but you're going to pay me with a check because the processing charges would have been over, over yeah. a thousand bucks. So do you have a rule? Like we have a rule now where it's like, I think it's like, what is it like? 2500 bucks or maybe it's five grand where anything over that we we request a check or ach or whatever like i don't want a credit card unless yeah. they have to like we will take a credit card but like ideally ach or check so that we don't have get hit with that three percent or whatever yeah i mean over five grand i like to go check mm -hmm. or i mean like you know we do stuff for schools and then we've got like some contract customers and they're all check or direct deposit and that's sweet you know right. i love Love it when the mailman comes and drops off a big check for like several jobs. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's the sweet. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no charges. So yep. yeah, I was like, yeah, let's uh let's just do a, a check for this. And he's like, Yeah, that's fine. I, I already got paid from all of the parents. It was like a sports club. And I was like, okay, perfect. So he's got the money. Let's do it. I went and did everything. This was in December of last year. Now, why so, did you only get a deposit? Is that just your the way you I didn't even get a deposit? It was I think I wrote the invoice on like December 31st. Like it was like the very end of the year and it was like, just get it in. Right. And I was like, all right, when you come and pick this up, just pay me with the check. And he's like, okay. Oh, okay. So he came and picked it up and then he gave me an envelope that was sealed. And I'm like, okay, cool. And it said like hollers on it. And I'm like, cool. He leaves. The check was a thousand dollars. I'm like, this is not good. I'm like, hey, I text him, I'm like, hey, this is like a thousand bucks. And he's like, yeah, I got the rest of it. You know, like, you know, just fed me some story. And that's, no, he doesn't you know, have the rest of it. No, he didn't. So I think he paid more than half of it, but like he left us with like almost 10 grand owed. So um, I was really nice about it until like it became like very apparent because like the money was coming. It was like every other week I'd get a check, you know, and I was like, all right, like if I'm just nice to him and I'm not like, being a dick i'll just continue to hopefully get paid mm -hmm. and then it just stopped and then yeah and then i was like all right well this guy stopped so um i got a friend who's a lawyer so i sent it to her and she's like all right well we can like uh we can like send a letter i was like all right do that and wasn't getting anywhere with that and then she's like we can we can like take it to court but like it's going to cost you I don't know if it's worth it for that much money to you. And I was like, well, I, right, think, well, I think that's the problem though, too, is it, it's at a certain dollar amount too. It's like, is it worth us fighting for? Like, I know it sucks. Right. Like it's terrible, but like we get all these people all the time. Like back in the day, we used to do it with bands that were on tour and they'd be like, Oh, well we need merch for tour, but we don't have any money. We can pay like a deposit, but we can't pay the whole thing. But when tour's over, we'll pay you the rest. And we were like, okay, cool. We were also like super naive and it was a band that we liked and whatever. And you know, they would owe like 10 grand or something. And then when tour was over, we would call and, or, and they'd be like, Oh, Daryl has it. And it's like, all right, well, we'll get a hold of Daryl. And he's like, Oh, Alex has it. And it's like, okay, cool. And then they just never pay. And then a month later they they call us and they're like, Hey, we need more for the next tour. And I'm like, you didn't pay the balance on the last one. They're like, 
we know, but here's like 600 bucks. Can we get like 50 shirts of this, 50 shirts of this? And then when this tour is over, we will definitely pay you more money. And then halfway through the tour, like their van breaks down and this and this. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, we don't have any more money. It's like, dude, we I'm not a bank. Like, I'm yeah. just like you. Like, I'm a, I think that's the, that's the thing is all these places think that because you're a, a business, you have this like reserve of like a million dollars where they can just like pull from and like pay eventually. And it's like, yeah, uh, no. So, I mean, luckily this was just profit. Like I had paid Sandmar and everything. So like with money that he had paid me. So like we were all square, I was all square with everything. This is just like, I'm looking for like my chunk of it now. Right. And you know, I went to the lawyer friend and she was like, it's going to cost you. Like, that's just the way it is. And I was like, all right, well, like I'm not, I'm not paying any money out of pocket to like get this done. So after I Googled a bunch of stuff, I found what is like a business to business collections agency, gave it to them. They take 20% if they collect. And at that point I was like, it's already not going to happen. So you can take 20%. I don't care. Right. Like 20, 20% of nothing is nothing. So like if, right. If they get you anything, it's better than you not. Right. Exactly. So it was pretty crazy because like they give you like a portal and you can like log in and it shows all the activity and stuff and all the phone calls are recorded. So you get to hear everything that this guy is. This, <laughs> dude, they were calling his wife, his brother, his dad. Like they that's the crazy part. That's, that's the crazy part is they're fucking ruthless. Like they don't give a shit. They, are. they want I their 20%. A, yeah. I figured out that they had this recording. I was at home one night on the couch and I walk into the, in our bedroom and I go to my wife. I'm like, you got to listen to this. And she's like, just turn this off. It's making me like right. really nervous here. Right. Like, I don't want to hear this. Like, why are they doing that? And I was like, well, the guy owes us money. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, it didn't matter how many times they called. He still never paid. So they were like, we can send it to an outside attorney and they're going to take like 35%. I was like, send it to the attorney, baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, what is this? October. So it's 10 months. Like nothing's happening. I'm not. Oh, you money, still. Oh, yeah. Okay, you haven't no, got anything. No. So, now, and, you know, guy, what? he's actually like out of local. Business. Yeah. Yeah. So you I can mean, like, like run I see into him, him at, in the grocery store or something. I've seen him at Costco a couple of times prior to this. And I can't wait to run into him again because he's going to pay for my groceries. <laughs> just push the cart in front of his and be like mm, yeah these are on you right <laughs> yeah um but he's actually out of business so like the the shtick was up so i actually like went onto their google and i was like reading the reviews and i was like this guy's doing this with every vendor that he has yeah it sucks and, like he's screwing I, the parents over he's screwing everyone over so i had the same thing it wasn't as much i think it was maybe like 2500 bucks or whatever it was a local guy he had a gun store and uh same thing he like ordered shirts and everything was all hype everything was awesome and then he was like oh i'll get you a check when it's over and he like picked up and was like oh i forgot my check whatever and then same thing like i kept emailing him like hey i don't have that check yet and he's like oh i'll stop by today stop by today i think like a month went by and i finally showed up like i had called him too and i'm like hey i'm gonna stop by today he's like oh i'm not around whatever i drove by and he was there and I was like, whatever. I'm, I I went in and he was like there and he was like, you could tell like instantly he started sweating like, fuck, like I don't have this, whatever. And he's like, oh, let me go get you a check. He comes out all grumpy and fucking writes me the check and hands it to me. And I swear when I turned around, he was like, he was like saying a bunch of shit like, oh, fuck you, blah, 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 whatever. So anyway, I get in my car and I start driving to the bank and I look and he like, he had like dated it for like two months from now. <laughs> and i was just like dude, dude what the fuck are you doing like like he wrote the yeah. money it was basically like monopoly money at that point like yeah i can't cash this check for two months yeah and the same thing though he's out of business now obviously he wasn't a good business person like it was just shady and robbing peter to pay paul on everything probably so uh, yeah that's what he was doing and i had heard that they were gonna like be in season this year and then one of the former coaches, they went out and started their own league and now I'm doing all the stuff for them. But I was like, what's up with this guy? And she's like, I don't think that he's, she goes, I think he's working in a warehouse now. And I was like, that's quite a change. So what did you, for like the listeners or whatever, what did you learn from that experience? Did you learn that? I mean, you didn't get paid, but you kind of learned like what's possible. 
Like, do you think it yeah. would be worth at a certain point to go a different route with it? Or do you think like, hey, if you're not getting paid, send the fucking dogs after them because I almost got money. I mean, after. I mean, it's hard because like I knew the guy for like five years, like. So we moved in here in March. This happened basically January 1st. I got the keys to here January 1st, but we didn't move until March. So we're in here in like January and we're like working on the place. And he comes in to like drop a check off. And he's like, he says like word for word. He's like, this is really great, Tim. I'm really proud of you. Great job. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. Like, cool. And then he hands me a check for a thousand bucks again. And I'm like, it's just, I don't know. It's like, I, I feel like I've got a pretty good, you know, feeling on people but like that one just took me by surprise for <laughs> sure so and of course the order was late he was always kind of unorganized the order was late so he's like you need to do this like right now so i was just kind of like i think i wasn't thinking clearly because it was a giant order and i was like sweet end to the year let's get started on it let's get paid and then it just you know it all happens so, i think it all happened so fast and before i knew it i was like standing there with no money <laughs> We, I mean, we got paid way more than half of it, you know, but still. Yeah, it's rough, though, because I feel like that's that's a sh worst case scenario when it's somebody, you know, or it's someone's in your town or whatever. But like, what do you do if it's a customer that's in another state or, you know, you've only got one or two orders under your belt with them and you have no way of contacting them? And that's my that's my scenario for almost every order is. Someone might want to do this that lives in Oklahoma or something. And it's like, I'm never going to can't like, I mean, I could fly to Oklahoma and knock on their door and be like, Hey, I need my money. But like, what do you do? Right. You just hope and pray they're going to pay their bill, which is why well, I've always been like, I need it up front. Yeah. And I think that, um, when we do stuff with people that are not in town or out of state, like it's always like pay up front and we do like enough promo we sell enough like promotional products to where like I've got like accounts with these distributors and stuff, but I don't have like net 30 with them. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll get like an email every day and it's like, this order is not going into production until you pay. And like, if I don't get to the email that day, like the next day, it's like your order is on hold. And like, I think probably as screen printers, a lot of us are just like happy to get the order and we're like, Maybe we'll just do it. We'll start it. Not to like, you know, we don't want them going somewhere else. But these promo companies are just like, pay us the money, then we'll do it. And if you don't do it, then whatever. Your enhanced date is that day. Well, you need to pay today if you want it by that day. And they're like so much more strict than I feel like a lot of maybe smaller to medium sized print shops are, you know. But I think we set the we set the bar for that kind of thing. And it's like people always talk about the race to the bottom of things. And it's like they know that if you you know they come to you and they're like oh i i want 30 day terms or whatever and you're like no they know they'll just go to another screen printer who's in his mm -hmm. basement that's hungry and is going to be like oh i'll do it i'll do it mm -hmm. and it's always that fight of like we're fighting with the people who are just shitty business people that are like giving the world and always will do anything for 10 cents cheaper or five whatever and they're just going to move on and on. But like you said, like there's all these promo companies, all the promo companies are like, Nope, I'm not doing a goddamn thing until you pay the bill. And it's like, that's what we need to do as a collective as screen printers and just be like, I'm not doing anything until you pay me. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's good business practice. I think, you know, you're not buying something from Amazon and like paying when the guy comes to drop it off, you know, or half of it. So, and you give him a check yeah. now and again as he drives by. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean like you know, everyone is pay up for, well, we got some net thirties, but everyone's pay up front. Then it always has been like that. It's just, you know, on when it's over five grand and like, I'm like, you're just going to pay the check. Or That's there's also, some people that are like, we don't pay with the cards. We pay with a check. Yeah. It's always worked out in my favor, except for this one time. And I'll be honest, like I've never understood that. Like I've understood to a degree of business and these, these large companies being like, well, it's a different department that does the, you know, like paying the checks and whatever. So we'll just, we just want to get the order and then we're going to send it to so-and-so and it's 30 days because it takes them this amount of time to process and do the ACH and all this other stuff. But it's like, like, really? Like, why do we have to do this? And usually, usually the answer is because that's the way we've always done it. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like there's this massive corporation that's like fucking billion dollars or whatever, and they order shirts and they're like, we need 30 days. It's like, wh- why? Like, why can't you just fucking pay me now? Like, I don't understand. You don't have a, you guys don't have like a, like a expense card to just take care of this order. <laughs> like, nope, it's 30 days. And then you just hope they send an ACH in 30 yeah. days. Well, there's a tech company that we do a bunch of stuff for. And I had turned down, there's like a feature in Printabo where like over X amount of dollars, you can like, there's no credit card. It's like bank transfers only. So I set that up for like five grand and then like she orders and then she like send replies to the email and she's like, can I just pay with a card? I'm like, yeah, but you know, like the credit card thing. And like, she's like, we can pay you with a check, but it's going to take 90 days. If you want to get paid now, we'll pay with a card and just add the three and a half percent. I don't care. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> but that's yeah. not every customer. It, yeah. You know? Nobody says just add you because, you know, that girl has or whoever on the other line was just like, it's not my card. I don't give a shit. Add the three yeah. percent. Like, I just want this well, done I mean, and off my plate. <laughs> it just comes out of her marketing budget. So right. what is she? It's three percent, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like they're a pretty big customer. I didn't charge the three and a half percent. I was like, just pay with the card. Let's let's mm-hmm. just get it done. Like, I just I just want the money now. Yeah. So. No. I'm not waiting 90 days for anything. So I don't know. The other thing I wanted to re- talk to you about was the whole, with the design thing and with your, with your business now, do you still do any design or is it more just like you're saying for like internal stuff or saps or your own promo or whatever? Yeah, I don't, I don't do it anymore. I don't do almost no design. Do you have any desire to do it? No. I'm so burned out with everything else. I don't, to be completely well, honest. I know you love your designers and stuff, but. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, it, it's funny because uh, doing this for so long, I sympathize with that because I was a designer first, too. And then when I worked at the shop that I worked at in Atlanta, that was my side hustle because I couldn't really afford to live where I was living. I would work during the day. And I would get a band or something that wanted to place an order that didn't have good art. And I'd be like, well, we have multiple freelancers we could send this to. And one of those multiple freelancers was me. And I would be like, well, I could design this. And they'd be like, all right, well, how much? I'd be like, oh, 150 for a t-shirt design or whatever. And it's usually back then it was like a, was it Go Media or whatever, where it was like, here's a skull vector pack or something. And it'd be like skull. Also a Cleveland behind it. Yeah. Exactly. Also a Cleveland company. Yeah. 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 And it was like, okay, let me put these like five vector things together, put their name on it in like bleeding <laughs> cowboys font or something and be like, thanks for 150 bucks. Um, but I would do that all the time. That would get me like extra, extra money. And I feel like when I started this company, I wasn't doing as I was definitely doing shirt designs that were better than that. But a lot of it was for our own like branding and marketing and like, that was what my design chops turned into was just making us look good, not necessarily doing client work. And then yeah. now I do none. Like I do zero design. Like I'm like, mm-hmm. I, we could have people come in. That's like a thing that I have to do like a live print on the weekend. I'm like, I have zero interest in designing this. Like who can we, I'm gladly pay them money to do this. Like I don't want to. Yeah. I've always been like, Oh, I should just like make some money on the side. I'll just do some design stuff. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Like, there's no desire to do that for me anymore. And even like stuff for here, it's like, I, uh, I'm so indecisive. Like mm-hmm. I've got so many, I've I got fully, so many different, yeah, so many different files that are saved on my computer that are like, just ready to go designs. And I just look at them like, yeah, it kind of sucks. I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'd rather pay somebody and then be like, yeah, it's all right. We'll just use this guy. I paid him a hundred mm-hmm. bucks, you know? We had a so. we had a marketing meeting on Wednesday where we were talking about stuff like that because one of the things that's been on our like to do list has been making a, like a PDF that we would send in an e- introductory email that was like these are our offerings and like these are our capabilities and our services and whatever and like we've had that on our to do list for eight years or something. And it's like every so often we we go, we talk about it because it's going to be a big project. Like it's going to be like, all right, let's put all this stuff together. We'll make it look nice, whatever. But my problem as it used to be a designer is like, I really want the aesthetic to be what it's on brand for us. You know what I mean? And like mm-hmm. the problem is, is I'm so busy doing other stuff that like I don't have the time or the capacity to do it. 
and I have handed it off before to employees that work here. And I'm like, Hey, you do this. And then they do the whole thing and give it to me. And I'm like, this is fucking terrible. Like this is <laughs> nowhere near, like this isn't even us. Like the, the colors, the, the typeface choices, like all this other stuff. I was like, this is not on brand at all. Yeah. And then I just scrapped the whole thing and I'm like, all right, whatever. And in the meeting on Wednesday, we were, we brought it up again. Like we should do this and whatever. And I'm like, this is going to sound super petty, but like, I need to make sure it's like what I want it to look like. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah I get it. Petty. I get it. But that's the thing is like, I don't want it. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings and be like, I think your design choices are dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, I've paid so much money to designers on Instagram and like they send it. I'm like, looks good. Just gonna right. leave that in the email. <laughs> right. Never gonna download. Yeah. No it. offense if I've ever hired you to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Just and you've I'm never so seen indecisive. it in a while. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So I think what my problem is, like, I'll go on Instagram. I'll be like, love that design. Like, I'm gonna hire this guy. He does something that looks pretty similar. I'm like, yeah, but not with my stuff on it. I don't like it anymore. I just, yeah, I'm not the one to ask at all. Maybe you step away from that. But can you though? Is the problem like, can you let stuff? go out that's in your shop that's like if it was your own shop shirt or something that you didn't have any hand in because yeah. i don't know if i could i don't know no you know the uh the guy chris that works here he he likes the grateful dead and i came in one day and he had a he had a shirt on and it was like the steely and it had it just said like it had the hollers logo on the inside and i was like i would never do that <laughs> that's kind of cool <laughs> like, right i'm not wearing that but like i get it you know you like the dad so go for it that's cool <laughs> we had a we had a kid who worked here we ended up having to fire for reasons i probably shouldn't talk about but he was like super talented we we all were blown away like we were super talented he's super talented like illustrator and he had made me a christmas present once which was like a full like poster size uh, illustration of like an eagle and it was like super realistic it had like upstate and a banner and like all this sort of stuff i actually have it hanging in like our showroom right now and uh we found out we're like holy shit where did this come from because he was just like a press operator and he's like bringing in people all these and he's like oh this is like stuff i do for fun at home and it was like all these like photo realistic like drawings that he made we're like oh my god these are amazing and uh he ended up like he's like oh i want to make an upstate shirt design or whatever and i was like all right cool he brought in his designs and i looked at them and i was like this isn't like the rest of your stuff and like i didn't say that i was just like one of those like oh yeah that's cool like you know whatever and then he finally got to the point he's like can we make these can we make these can we make these i was like yeah like we can make some just go like tell chris like order some shirts for it or whatever and we'll print some here i am thinking he's gonna make like 12 shirts and i should have specified like hey let's do like 25 shirts of this 25 shirts of this whatever he ended up ordering like 150 of each <laughs> and we fucking printed them and he made them like whatever like a six color back like four color front and like all this other stuff and i was just like oh my god and i remember they all got like folded and tagged everything and they got put on the shelf in here and they never moved so there's like 300 shirts in here with those designs on them that, and I don't want to put them in the front room where it's got like all the night, the ones I like that like customers can take for free. They're like in the back where like employees yeah. could take them and they're just, they just sat here and sat here. So I don't, I don't know. It's just weird. Like the whole like branding yourself and marketing, it's like too much, too on the nose for me to, mm -hmm. to deal with. I don't know. I, I just wanted to get your take on that. Like what, how you feel. It feels like you're the same way where you're just like, I will, I'd rather spend the $300 from the designer and just put it on the shelf and never actually print it or do anything with it. Yeah. Well, I got some shirts up front that, you know, like I know that like you've always done that, like give, give shirts away for free. Dude, they've been sitting there for months. No, no one takes them. I'm like, whatever. Some guy came in and he's like, this is really cool. How'd you print this? And I was like, yeah, it's just like, uh, it's like plastisol with like soft hand and he's like oh yeah i really like that can you put that in the box and send it to the customer so uh, like i want to i want to show it to him i'm like sure it's like a contract customer that's, that's like literally what we do with them <laughs> yeah. yeah more often than not like we have a nice display in the front room where like if a customer came in and picked up and they're like excited about whatever like the girl at the front desk should be like hell yeah talking to them and whatever and they're like 
it's like, oh, do you want one of these? Like pick. And we have it looks nice forever. And they'd be like, oh, I'm a large. I'll take that one, that one, that one. And we'll just give it to them. Like, I want them to have it. Like, I want them. It's an ad for us. Like, walk around with these shirts on. But nine times out of ten, what it is, is we are sending promo boxes to prospective clients or whatever. And we're those designs up front is like, okay, this is a plastisol print. Okay, this is an oversized print. This one's a discharge print. This one's a discharge on a base of all on top. Like there's all these different options and like DTF, whatever, and different design styles and feels where when we have that from a customer, say it's a coffee shop or something, we'll be we'll be like, well, they they really like soft prints. We're like, all right, we'll take a water base one, take a discharge under base one, and that's what goes in the promo box. So I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was like Monster Press. They're in the UK. The, I think it was them. I might be wrong. Where they had that, they had an online store where instead of a customer coming to you and being like, oh, I want a sample of this shirt, this shirt, they would just sell them samples with their own prints on them. So there'd be just like an online store with like a Monster, Monster Press logos on everything. And then you'd be like, oh, well, I want a 1717 with a discharge print or whatever. And they would just buy your shirt online for 15 bucks. And then they would get that sample. It's like, okay, this is a printed sample of that blank. That's and a I always, good idea. I always thought that was really cool because it was just like, it was the sample store or whatever. It's not, and it mm -hmm. kind of killed two birds with one stone of like, well, I don't want to have a store that's just like, buy my upstate merch shop tees, which nobody ever does <laughs> other than other print shops. And then it kind of turned it into, well, instead of us giving you free samples and free blanks all the time, you're buying a shirt from us that's supporting us, but also showing you what that print technique is like and what that shirt feels like. So. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good idea with what they were doing. Monster press. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Again. It, it, hey, I love, I love those guys. They're friends of mine. And if that wasn't them, you're welcome. Like I just made you look really good. <laughs> um, I can't remember. There's there's too many there's too many things out there, and I can't I can't remember who's who. Um, but anyway, how's how's things now? You you said you moved. You like the new place. You guys are stoked. This year's going good. You're mm -hmm. you're onward and upward. Yeah, yeah. No, we're uh, we're definitely up over last year, so that's good. Especially considering that we don't do any marketing at all. It's all just word of mouth and. Re returning customers so it's been uh yeah it's been a good year you know it's uh i was listening to the prince Habo podcast a couple weeks ago and uh steven was like talking about like you know like when it's really hard to like hire people and like you don't have enough money to hire that next person full-time yeah. but there's so much to do but like the money's not quite there yet. And that's where I think that we're at right now. And I'm just, yeah, I'm like, I'm so burned out right now. Like I, I don't really have much left in the tank to get through the rest <laughs> of the year. Like a couple of weeks ago, I was, I went on, uh, Expedia and there was some cheap flights to go out to Colorado. And I was just like, my wife had a Friday off and I was like, we are going to Colorado. And she's like, what? And I was like, I need to get the hell out of here for a weekend mm -hmm. where like, I can't, like, I'm not taking my computer. I'm not doing anything. Like we're just we're going, and she's like, "All right, let's do it." So, did you? Yeah, that's were, you it is. were you able to recharge from that, or are you just like we're going uh, this Friday? We're leaving or Thursday? Yeah, this, this upcoming. So you week, ha so. you haven't had the recharge fill your cup yet? Not yet. <laughs> no, no, and I'm waiting for it. So, <laughs> I get people that DM me stuff like that and ask like questions and for advice or whatever. Like I have answers, um, but they're like. Uh, I'm in a, basically what you said, like, I'm in that weird spot of like, I don't know if I have enough money to pay a person, but I need a person. Like, have you guys looked at automating as much as possible before hiring a human? Or is it like, this is a human being position, like it has to be a person? Um, I think we, well, like, we're not like at the point where like, we need like a uh, direct, I mean, I'd love a direct screen, but like, we don't make that many screens to where I don't think it makes sense. Um, I mean, we just need like one more person in production and we have like a, it's me, a full time, a part time. And then my wife does a bunch of like part time billing and that type of stuff and like keeps it all, all legal with the state and everything. So that, that helps what she does. And then the part timer that's here, he really helps, but it's, it's like, man, we need you like another like day. We need him full time, but just yeah. can't. 
this can't happen. I'm just wondering because so. even with like the the CTS stuff, um, we do a lot of screens, but not like a lot, a lot. It's not like we're like, oh, we, we're doing like hundreds of screens a day. Um, but still, it's so automated in that room and in other sections that the person who does that can just go do some like go be the on press now mm-hmm. because it's so fast and efficient and instead of it's at the point now where well especially because it's kind of been a weird year where that person can be like oh i'm gonna clean screens and burn screens like three days a week and the other two days i'm available to do whatever the fuck you want me to do Mm -hmm. so that's what i'm saying is more like getting someone out of that position or if they leave or quit or whatever all you got to do is go in a room take a screen put it in hit a button it's not like you have to like think about this so what I'm wondering is if the person you have doing anything to do with that now could be the person you're looking for on press, but you're you're cutting the job that they're currently doing now in half, basically by automating. Yeah, I think um, you know what would help is hiring graphic source to get someone to do all the art and like be in Printavo because like we do have a couple of big contract customers and like that volume gets like out of control sometimes and i'm mm-hmm. just like it seems like i could sit in here some days and just write up uh, print table jobs for like four or five hours So like that would be really helpful but also if i had but then i got to get into the back to do something so if i had someone in the back doing the print table stuff isn't a huge deal and i think there probably isn't enough anime uh i don't think a lot of stuff is like set to where I feel good about letting that go. There's no like mm-hmm. automations in Printavo, you know, like it's all just like, I mean, like if I die tomorrow, like this place is screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, Everything runs through me, which is definitely a problem. And I can leave here and like, it's no problem. Like Chris, he can, he can handle it. You know, like he does a pretty good job without me here, but the jobs won't get put in. The art won't get done, you know? So mm-hmm. it, it's like, do I hire someone on the print on the printable side through graphic source? Because it's sweet. There's no payroll tax. There's none of that. It's mm-hmm. definitely like the cheapest. Route well, that's why I say about automation is like the same thing. There's no extra payroll. There's no taxes. There's they don't get mm-hmm. sick. They don't whine about stuff. They don't everything else. It's like they're there 24 seven if you need them. And that's it. And they pay themselves off. The biggest thing is I always look at like, OK, what is this person going to get paid for the year? And then I'm like, all right, well, how much is this piece of equipment? It's like, okay, cool. Well, I could, instead of giving them a salary, I could two years from now, this piece of equipment would pay for itself. And then I have yeah. it for the next 20 years for nothing. Right. So. Yeah, I don't know. I think that that's probably the best thing to do. And then, you know, I mean, at this point in the year, like it's already October. So it's like, why, like, I, I don't feel like great about hiring someone right now because you're going to go into January, yeah. February. And then it's like, I don't, the thing that really screws with me is like, I don't want to mess with someone's livelihood, like mm-hmm. pulling someone in full time and be like, and we've done that. all your bills. And then I'm like, Hey, yep. by the way, you're not working for the next two months. And they're like, yo, I got like all this stuff to do. We've I got def- all these bills to pay. We've definitely done that. We've hired when we didn't necessarily need to. And then when it slows down, they're like the newest person. So they're kind of the first one to be like, we only need you three days this week or two days this week. And they're like, I need 40 hours to like cover my bills. And I'm like, I yeah. need you to not be here because I can't afford to have you here all day. <laughs> like there's only yes. so many times you can organize the inks or alphabetize this or whatever. Yeah. Like I need you to go home. Yeah. And like, uh, I mean, like we're, yeah, there's some money in there to hire somebody. And that's where I think the part-time works out for right now. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like next year, like I I said that going into this year, but next year, like I'm not doing this again. Like, it's just too, we're too strapped. And like, we just need to have someone Mm full-time, just someone to just like run around the shop and do whatever. Like I do all the embroidery. Which is fine because it's like the embroidery is nice. Like you set that thing up on the machine, press play and walk away. Like you don't have to, you're not standing there like you are on a press, you know. I know you don't know the backstory of this, but I'm in like talks right now of bringing embroidery in house and kind of like buying an entire embroidery setup. And I've been stewing back and forth for the last like two weeks of like, do I do this or do I not do this? And a lot, I would say 
90% of the shops owners I've talked to that I, I asked them their opinion have said, fuck yeah, bring it in house, do it. And like, Oh, now it's like 40% of my business. And the markup is like this and it's really good. And I'm like, Ugh. now I have to learn a whole new thing. <laughs> Dude, just do it, do it. It is, you know, what is really nice about embroidery is there's no screens. There's no reclaim. There's no inks. Like I, I hate buying a bucket of Will Flags Rio for $140. You go buy a spool of, fr- spool of thread for like 10 bucks. You pay for the $30 digitized file and you put it on the machine and you run it. Like we just did, I don't know. There's a, there's a link for um, Sandmar. It's shop.companycasuals.com. And it's like their customer facing site. And it's got all the, like the retail prices on there. And they're like, we want some uh, some rain jackets. So I sent them three rain jackets. One of them was a North Face. It's like a $70 jacket, my cost. And the list price is like $145. And they're like, we'll take 15 of those. And I was like, perfect. I mean, you can't do that with screen printing. And it was on and off in like an hour. And you just made how much money? Like the money is definitely, the, the margins I feel like are definitely That's better. That's what I've heard is bit. the margins are a lot better. I there's do, not as many other, consumables. Yeah. The other thing I heard was it's slow. Like it is, you only have so many heads. And if that job takes 45 minutes to do, you're doing six items every 45 minutes or whatever. Depending yeah, on how Are you going to buy new? No, the wall, it's all of her equipment. And it's, it's, it's not a lot of equipment. Again, I'm not going like crazy, but it's like, I think it's like a six head Tajima and like two single heads. And then like all the hoops, all the threads, whatever. And then she was also like, I will work for you for a month and train whoever you want me to train for a month. And I'm like, okay, good. Cause I have no fucking idea how to do this. So that's the setup right now. Like that's the idea. And I'm kind of like, all right, I think I want to do it. But again, it's getting into a whole new thing. And I'm like, I've always said, even on the show, like stick to one thing and be really good at it. (laughs) Now I'm like, but I feel like embroidery is so close. Like it's so interwoven with our, no pun intended, with our industry, like screen printing that it, we are having a lot of customers that I feel like if we didn't offer embroidery would just go somewhere else because they're like, I need 500 shirts, but I also need a hundred hats embroidered or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if I said, I don't do the hats, but we'll do the shirts, they'll just go to the next guy who will do the hats and the shirts at one place. Put it all on one invoice. Well, your, your one thing that you want to do is just branded merch, you know? So yeah. that's what this is. It's like, you know, I would never just be like a plastisol only or water based only shop. Like I want, I want plastisol. I want water based. I want discharge. I want puff. I want the DTF. I'll outsource yeah. to DTG if you want it. But like, if that's what's going to work for you and that's what you want, then I'm going to do it for you. Right. You know, and we're like that too. But I just, I feel like we got such a good flow and such a good, like, we've been you know, really focused on the, just like you said, like the screen printing, all the effects or whatever, and then like TTF and all this other stuff. But it's just like, you get tempted every year to be like, oh, well, let's offer promo and let's do banners and stickers and let's do this and this. And it's like, those are all totally different. Like it's in the same vein, but it's like a whole different world of thinking and application mm-hmm. and all this other stuff and we've tried to like mix them in like oh let's do promo and then, and then we don't have anybody as knowledgeable enough on it and it's a lot of like trial and error and figuring out what items and what places you want to go to and we usually end up botching it and we're like fuck it we're not offering promo anymore <laughs> so, yeah the promo money's easy though you know it's just paper deals you don't even have to touch it and it's, i just it's, feel like i i feel like i've never had anyone complain yeah like, it's always just, just been good me personally Again, I think it's just my personality where I'm just like, uh, I'm just going to be really good at screen printing and call it good. Yeah. Like, I don't, wrong with that. no, but I'm just saying like, I probably could do a really good job with these other things. I'm just like nervous to bring them on and go through the growing pains of dealing with it. And then once that's done, it's like all this rules, like we're making so much money on promo and whatever. And yeah, I, I just don't cause I'm a scared cat. So. Well, the embroidery, I definitely, I would go for that. So your vote you is know? to do it. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, like, you know, if everything that happened with the whole collections things earlier this year didn't happen, I'd have, I only have a single head. I would have bought the six head. Like, that's where that, all that money was going towards, right. towards a, a new, brand new six head. And then, yeah, yeah, and then I just, yeah, it didn't happen. So it's going to happen. But yeah, I'd rather, like, the next equipment I'm buying is, is more embroidery for yeah. sure. We, the thing is, we've never offered it. Like we don't have like on the website, we don't have anything. We don't post on Instagram. Like here's the embroidery we do. Like we, we do a lot of it, but we never promote it. It's always somebody being like, I have this order, but I also need this. And we're like, we can take care of it for you. But it's a, yeah. no, it's a lot, like it's consistent. So I feel like if we were like, Hey, we have embroidery in house now, I would definitely market it. I would add it to the website. I would whatever. And then it could be like a whole nother thing. I just it's a different customer too you know it's like a different type of customer that gets embroidery yeah like there's always like the ones that's gonna be like oh we want like 20 hats but then there's people that are just doing like like tons of golf shirts for you know their corporate business and they got they got money to spend like it's in the budget right. and they all need i think it's forms. just a perceived value of this is definitely like a higher ticket item it's not for like sure. they're like oh i want to you know a tall text t with this print on it and it's good i'm expecting to pay four dollars it's like no i want a nike polo that i'm going to show off to all my golf buddies with my logo on it and i'll pay a hundred dollars for it or something yeah so yeah we just played in a, a golf outing i took uh it's like the guy that works here full-time and then the part-time guy he couldn't play so i took uh two two different vendors so it was the four of us who went out there and played and it was for chamber of commerce here that I'm that I'm a member of and like everyone's got a golf shirt on with their with their company logo and they all got the promo stuff and it's like <laughs> I showed up with nothing that said hollers <laughs> right the one guy who can actually produce it <laughs> yeah yeah I had like a hat that didn't say hollers I had a golf shirt that was blank that I bought from Sandmar <laughs> which is with that's like a that's like a straight up like apparel making person thing to do like yeah. Almost everybody I know that we all wear blank shirts or like blank yeah. shit, which is funny too, because I went that route forever. But recently I've been buying bootlegs like crazy that are like the shittiest prints you can get. Like I'm literally buying like, I don't know if I have one. No, I think I actually have a blank shirt on today, but I have some shirts that are just like, oh, I really like Harry and the Hendersons. And it's like, I found a bootleg Harry and the Henderson shirt online and it's printed on like the cheapest, shittiest shirt. And I just love the movie. I love the, I, I kind of like the fact that it's printed shitty. Like I like the fact that like <laughs> some dude probably made this in his basement, like burn the screen in the sun. And like, yeah. it is what it is, but it's funny. Cause like I could look at that and be like, this is trash and whatever, but I actually like it. But the problem is, is when I wear that out where I'm with other screen printers and they're like, ew, like I hope Dylan didn't print that shirt. You know what I mean? Like, like the thing, this thing is fuzzy. Like, but I just like them. I don't know. It's weird. So I don't blame you for going there and being just like plain. I feel like we just see designs all day long. We don't want necessarily to like yeah. wear them and advertise them and pick them apart. And to be fair, I did have a quarters up jacket on when I got there, and it had a it had our logo on it. But then it got warm, so I took it off, and I was like, well, I guess I got a blank shirt on under this. So. You're that yeah. one guy. You actually stood out above the rest because you were the only <laughs> one without a Toyota logo or something on you. Well, even Chris shows up and he's got like the shirt. He's got a golf shirt on with the logo. He's got the hat on. And I look at him like, dude, you're really representing today. He's like, he looks at me he's like, where's, where's all your stuff? I was like, yeah, I'm going to find it this morning. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah. Well, man, do you have any uh, shop hacks or anything like that that you might want to share or anything you've come across over the years? We did shop hacks for forever, and it started to get to the point where every episode someone was like, I don't have one you haven't already talked about. And we're like, OK. And it literally got to where we had to start cutting them out because they were like, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. And then uh, we had asked in the discord maybe six, eight months ago or something like, what do you guys want to want us to hear or bring back and everyone was like shop hacks shop hacks so i started asking again and we've gotten a couple of good ones with like new technologies and new sales tools or whatever but i think the basic ones of like oh i use baby wipes or i do this or that is kind of they're just 
everywhere now. So it's not really a shop hack anymore. It's like, if you're not doing this, you're doing something wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Some of the things I've always been doing is just like, you know, using both ends of the screen. I guess it's not really a, a shop like a left hack, chest but... on one side and then uh, like a oh, front yeah. print on the other one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's always and great. then uh, like Windex for water base sink. Mm -hmm. Do that. Yeah. There was one we talked about in a recent meeting where, again, I was I described this to these guys of like, you know how you do something for years? There's that whole Instagram account of this guy who's a mechanic or whatever, and he does the uh, no way or whatever. And he's like, he's like, for fuck's sake, I've like done this for 25 years and I didn't know you could do that or whatever. It's kind of like that yeah. where I don't think about it ever. You just kind of do what it is you do. And we have. For heat pressing here we always have like whoever's available or something to go out and do the like dtf and whatever and they're always their biggest complaint with doing transfers is just making sure the transfer is straight you know like loading the shirt and making sure like the design's not crooked and whatever or the shirt the the center line on like a, a you know like a gildan or something where it's like okay you think it's straight but actually it's just a random fold line and it's like at a 45 degree angle or something and then you hold it up and you're like wow that's super crooked um i saw someone on like a like a cricket mom or something where she just folded the shirt in half like on the table like fold it in half put the sleeves together and then heat pressed it and then when she took it off it had a perfect like center line heat pressed down oh, the middle God. and i was like holy fuck like how have i never thought of that before Cause there's all these shirts too, like where it's an expensive shirt and you're like, I really don't want to fuck this up. Right. Like when you're loading, like, you know, a regular shirt, you're like, okay, this is pretty good. Like you hold the sleeves up, you measure with your fingers and you're like, this is straight. But if I'm like, Oh God, I have this like, you know, like North face thing or something. You're like, I really don't want to fuck this up. And then you're like taping it on the table and like trying to bring it to the press to do without like screwing it up. Now I'm like, I can just fold it in half and press it. It's and then I have a idea. perfect center line. Here's a, here's one for you. Um, because we're smaller. All right. So if we have a job and we're printing with plastisol and it's a sleeve print or they got inside tags. And if one guy is running the press, we run that sleeve or the inside tag first, flash it really hot, pull it off, stick it on a cart. The ink is dry, but not mm -hmm. fully cured. Turn around, print the front, lay the sleeve out on the dryer and then it's then you're only picking the shirts out of the basket once instead of twice that's awesome. that is a huge time saver for us yeah that makes a lot but of that sense. doesn't matter if you got three guys running a press but if you're running it solo that's a huge I, one i feel like i would like that for the sleeve print but the neck label one is hard because a lot of times people want neck labels that are like at three by three or a little over and you kind of have to like stretch the neck to make sure it's like going through the dryer correctly you do yeah but then i mean you're yeah, spending a lot of time like laying it on the dryer and then like opening the neck to find out that it mm -hmm. drank back down or folded on itself going through <laughs> but the sleeve was but perfect also, because you could just like flap it over mm -hmm. and it's there but also the the inside neck label what do you need that print one time when you go to buy it and you're like yeah, yeah. that's large that's me you know? i agree Not we also don't screen print neck labels anymore like they're all transfers so yeah um, we just kind of like run that through yeah i mean that, that's a good one we're trying to convert a press right now to like a dtf auto so we're excited about that because it's going to make things way faster when it comes to pressing um so i'm that's excited to cool. i'm excited to do that because it's like getting giddy about solving a problem and like making something new in the shop that we didn't have before so like back in the day when you built everything and oh i know, know yeah and you're excited you're, you're stoked <laughs> on the whole thing yeah well it was funny yeah. i kind of had that like itch scratch the other day because i had sent something in the chat of like um does anybody have a grid laser you know you just buy the lasers now where it's like a cross line or it's whatever mm -hmm. i was like i really want a grid that's like an inch grid where i can do like a like a black iron pipe straight up on like from the ceiling down to above the pallet and then there's an inch grid to where when we load the shirt on the auto for this heat press thing that we have an inch grid perfectly for placing the DTF on the shirt. 
So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, it's two inches down. Like every time it's going to be in this spot or the left chest or whatever, like placing it is going to be so much easier. And uh, I was like, we looked on Amazon. I ended up looking on eBay and then I found like tons of different random, like Chinese ones on eBay and I found a good one. And then, like checked out this other one. I actually bought a couple of them to test out. And like all that made me feel like back in the day when you're like, I'm, I'm solving these problems and I'm going to make something that doesn't necessarily exist yet. And like, I'm excited to do this. Like the whole concept of what we're doing isn't new. Like rock has a whole press right now that does exactly what we're trying to do. Right, but like right. to, to make it happen here with what we have and what we currently want to do is like new to us. So I'm excited to, to go that route. You're not spending like a hundred grand or whatever they cost. No, no, no. Well, I mean, that thing rules. Like it looks awesome. Right. right, Also too, it's like when I look at that, I also see things where, again, no offense to rock because it it is sweet. It's just like, well, we have stuff all the time that's DTF where it's coming off a roll or we're getting cut sheets of something that's a left chest or whatever. And it's like the ones that they had were getting pulled that had to have X amount of inches on the bottom of clear film to where the thing could pick it up and drop it and then also like scoop it up. And I was like, well, that's a lot of wasted film in spots or it has to be a certain size. I was like, I want this grid where whoever's loading it just takes a couple seconds and like grabs the transfer and places it and then it goes and like we can peel it by hand. Like this is still going to be 10 times faster than putting it on the heat press pressing it for 15 seconds, sliding it over, doing the next one. Like we're just going to be loading and then have two stamps on the press where if it's a 10 second press, now we can do a five second, a five second. So your dwell time on the press is only five seconds. So it's like, we're still going to be going fast, even with someone peeling and like placing it. It's still going to be 10 times faster than doing it on the fucking regular heat press. So yeah, it is monotonous doing it on a regular heat press. We just did a hundred of them today and it was like almost half a day, you know, right. getting them, getting them pressed. But if you had it on the auto and it, yeah. it would be way faster. And that yeah, was the thing too, sure. is like you could do, um, even if it was one operator, we were saying, okay, let's just do two presses next to each other and then we'll just spin it twice and it'll do the post press, whatever. But you could just do like a stamp on head one and then a stamp on head six or something. And then, around station four with someone just peeling the transfers so that you could do the pre-press and post-press like in mm. one spin. So you have a loader on one side and a peeler on the other and it's just one like spin DTF like all something. day. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, That'd it'd be, be so much faster. Yeah. So that's what yeah, I'm saying. No, like, cool. well, just want to build that, but I'm like excited to do it. And you know, I'm just waiting on the electrician right now. Like we could do it today if we wanted to, but like I'm waiting for the electrician to come and like put two new drops in and, and everything else. Nice. Well, man, I appreciate you getting on and doing this. I appreciate you being flexible with time. I know we miss Andy today, but you know, he's got to take care of some stuff and uh, I'm glad uh, things are going good for you. I'm glad you're not designing shirts anymore. <laughs> you come into the uh print hustlers and i am i was going to ask you about that how far away are you from the hall of fame 20 minutes really yeah yeah well, i haven't I'll, been to the hall of fame in quite a few years but yeah it's funny there. there's always this is a whole lot we don't have to go on this road but like you go and i go and visit these friends in different states that live in these cities and stuff and it's just like new york city or whatever there's a lot of people that live there have never been to the statue or they've never <laughs> like done these things and it's like even when I went and saw Andy, we went to this one museum that was like amazing. I was like, this is the best museum I've ever been to in my life. And he's like, I've lived here my whole life. I've never gone. I'm just like, <laughs> I've been there. I've been there a few times. It's just been a while. Is so. it sweet? Yeah. From what I remember. Yeah. I mean, like there's, there's usually like an exhibit upstairs, like that they bring in. So it depends what's up there. Like it's but, fresh, yeah. like a, some new one. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think like when I went there like years ago, it was like a Michael Jackson um exhibit and it was like the whole second floor was like you know you had like his jacket up there and stuff so it's right. kind of cool so the, the one glove yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, if, no, I, can, cool, if I can maybe i'll try to swing down and see your shop or something are you gonna go to yeah. print hustlers or you're just gonna be around uh no i'm gonna go i'm gonna go at least for the talks i don't That's know right. i'm not like getting a hotel downtown or anything well you doing the wouldn't need to so. yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah no i'm at least going to the talks i've been yeah i've just, 
I mean, every year I want to go and it's just like the ticket price and then the, mm-hmm. the airfare and the hotel and timing's I, never worked out. So I do always tell people, though, kudos. And Andy says the same thing. It's like, I think the two things you should do as a print shop owner every year is print hustlers in Long Beach. Like you should try to do those two things. Yeah, the last like Long one Beach is really to. good for just being inspired to like grow your business and do new things, which is usually mm-hmm. print hustlers. And then Long Beach is like the show to go to to like look at new technology, new equipment, and see yeah. like every other shop and network. Mm-hmm. All the other ones in the middle, they're cool, and if they're local, go. But like that's not like I'm going to make a special trip to go to some other random show. Yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to it. When I found out it was in Cleveland, I was like, no way. And I was like, why are they coming to Cleveland? I was like, oh, they're going to rock all. That makes sense. Which is funny because <laughs> I, a bunch of people I've said like, oh, are you going to print houses this year? And I was like, it's in Cleveland. They're like, why the fuck Cleveland? <laughs> it's always like, oh, because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's there. Yeah, well, everyone shits on Cleveland. So well, I don't know whatever. anything about <laughs> Cleveland at all. Like, I I probably would love Cleveland, but like the only thing I know about Cleveland is the Rock and Roll Roll Hall of Fame and Drew Carey. Drew Carey's there. Yep. They. How about this? We got the only free art museum in the country. Really? And it's legit. Oh yeah, yeah. That's on the east side of town. So yeah. <laughs> what else it's is legit. Cleveland known for? Real quick before we leave. Anything Cleveland else? Cleveland Browns, baby. I, I was meaning to look. I was like, I wonder if there's a Browns game that day because it's the Browns stadium is right next to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It would be a shit show if the Browns are at home. <laughs> like everyone there's just tailgating everywhere. But yeah, I mean, dude, Cleveland's good for good for their food and definitely a lot of cultures. I'm here. excited. Uh, I've never been there. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm definitely excited to go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll send you a DM. I'll think of some things for you to do while you're here. If you're going to be here for an extended, extended yeah, I usually try to when I travel to somewhere new like that, try to stay an extra like day or two just to kind of like do stuff locally. Yeah, see what's around, find a hike or an art museum or something. Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of shit to do here. We yeah. just get the bad rap, you know. Yeah, <laughs> me and Christina have been looking for when we travel to these places to like find like planetariums and just see everyone's got like a different take on like a planetarium. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you guys have one, but I don't know. There's one like local over here in the suburbs, but that's not one to like go to. But the art museum is sweet for sure. Yeah, that's that's good. They got a and then the natural history museums over. They got a whole bunch of museums on the other side of town. But that's also 20 minutes from the, the right. rock hall. Right. So. Well, thanks, dude, again. Appreciate you. I uh, will see you. What? That's like a month from now. Yeah, I think it is about a month. All right. Well, later, man. I'll Have be a good there. Day. All right, man. You too. See you, dude.